Welcome everyone, Fred Gleek here with Bob Bly. We're a little bit early, I'm gonna share my screen. If you could just tell me in the question box that you can see the screen, not like yesterday if you were there, because I completely spaced out and forgot to put it up. Brian, uh, Robert says, can't see. So yeah, thanks folks, uh, excellent. So if you could just tell us uh, where you're from. I can see Garrett is here, he's from South Africa. Where is everyone else from? Just uh, city and state. I will, I will announce it, Robert's from Connecticut. Got it. I've spent a little bit of time in Connecticut. NYC Hector used to live on the Upper East Side. I uh, have a place I'm selling on 34th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, Everett, Michigan, Anchorage, Alaska. Joel, thank you. New York, Rogers at New York City. Edmonton, Canada for Jefferson. Dallas, Fort Worth area, Donna. Wichita, Kansas. A lot of people all over the place. Sam, Santiago, that's great. Uh, he's here from Phoenix. You have to give me a call, Sam, when you're in uh, Vegas. Brussels, Belgium. Mark, you, I think you win currently the, no, 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 South Africa's further away. So uh, Chicago, Toronto, Ra Rolf, I got that. Uh, BC, Kelowna, Kel God, I'm terrible with that pronunciation. Kelowna, Kelowna, uh, Jim, uh, Gary, got you in Phoenix. Good. Okay. A lot of people from all over the place. I won't uh, continue to yak about that. I will wait though till the start of the actual top of the hour before I get going as long as everybody, and Bob, you can see my screen as well, right? I can see your screen, yes. Excellent, okay. So we have a welcome screen up there and I will wait till exactly at the top of the hour. Make, let's make sure that it's being, that we've got this being recorded. I think it is. Um, yes, it is recording. So all of that is good to go. And so as soon as I see it, click over to 12 o'clock my time, Pacific time, and Bob, that would be through your time, I will get going. So give us a couple of seconds here. Uh, welcome, obviously, I don't need to redo that. So, so there we go, top of the hour here. So question is, who am I? Uh, I'm Fred Bleak, and I've been doing info marketing since 1984. First offline, then online. And Bob, I was just thinking about the fact that we used to make the joke that before we started doing everything digitally, and had to ship out cassette tapes and VHS tapes, that the only people that really made money was UPS because we were <laughs> shipping, returning, it's just, you know, now we have zero cost of goods, right? So it's it's a, a complete thing. Now, the second item, and Bob, you can tell them the story, how I dragged you uh, into the online internet marketing business, kicking and screaming, you can tell that story right now, why don't you? Well, it's really simple. Fred and I were friends and we would see each other once or twice a year. And every time he would say, you really have to get into this internet marketing, information marketing business. But I said, I, I'm not interested. I have, you know, my, my urge to write uh, content is fulfilled by my books. I was writing and still write uh, paper bound books for uh, traditional publishing houses like McGraw Hill and John Wiley. But one day he wore me down and I decided to do it. And uh, I put, you know, I, now I already had a, an e-list because I had an e-newsletter for my freelance copywriting business. So, you know, I, I had a list that's smaller than it is today, but it was like 40,000 people. So I sent an email to the list offering an information product that was nothing more than an assemblage of articles I had pre already written for print publications. And that was my, my big advantage. I already had a lot of content I owned. So I didn't have to do any work for that. I just sent it, these articles to my graphic designer. I said, put them in a, an ebook PDF. Then I sent out uh, the email. And you know these are articles I had written years ago and that were sitting in, in a file drawer. And within, I think, 48 hours, I made $2,400. And I said, he's right. This is a good idea. <laughs> I got it. And by the way, we should celebrate today, folks, because Bob tells me that with the release of his latest book, he's now up to 100 total books. And uh, that's just a ridiculous amount of books, Bob. That really well, is. you know that I'm a workaholic and I have very few other interests. So, uh, you know, that's what I do. You got it. And like you, my, uh, my uh, workaholism really extends to doing things like this, which is I've produced thousands of hours of info products for myself and for others, primarily using either live events or webinars and things like that. I actually now, Bob, and I don't think I've even told you this, 
I'm now doing a fair amount of work with the folks from Rapid Crush with Jason Fladlin, who has sold more products and services via infomercial uh, via webinar than anybody else. He's over a hundred million dollars in products sold by infomercial, and I'm doing some work with them as well. That's, That's impressive. Uh, via yeah via webinar, yeah, it is impressive. So. Um, I've done a lot of seminars, 1,400 days of seminars over the last 30 years. Um, I, I kind of know, I kind of know this space pretty well. Um, it changes constantly, though, which what makes it exciting. So make sure I want to say, I want to say to everyone, stay for your free gift at the end. I'm going to give you a free gift worth $450. So make sure and stay through the bitter end. It won't be too bad, I don't think, because we'll make it interesting. Okay, so the old information model, uh, info marketing model, which is what Bob continues to use, and he can comment on that, uh, you get people to give you their email address in exchange for some kind of a valuable freebie, something of value that they will say, hey, it's worth you harassing me constantly with emails to get this free gift. Uh, then you get them to buy an inexpensive product uh, and then trade them up to more and more expensive products or more, more products of a similar price. So I found that whole process, um, although I did it for a while, it's overly complicated now compared to the new process. But Bob, why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, what you do and how you do that model, then I'll contrast it with the, the one I'm using now. Well, I do what Fred described, and he got me into this in 2004, and I, I do it in a way, I won't go into great detail unless Fred asked me to, but I do it in a way that it is a totally passive income for me, for example, Fred is giving this webinar today. It's really not passive income. He's spending an hour doing it. Mine business is completely passive. And the reason is that I have a, a full-time, a day job that I love. I'm a freelance copywriter and I work at that 50, 60 hours a week. So I just wanted my online stuff to be an ancillary source of income. I said, if I could you know, make a six figure income you know, working two hours, three hours a week, which is what I do on this business, I'd be happy. So this works for me, but you know, it has certain limitations. One of them is you have to have fairly simple products, DVDs, uh, streaming video, uh, streaming audio, MP3 files, ebooks, some regular books, and, uh, you know, to get people to buy them without having a, you know, uh, without having a phone call or a webinar, it, you know, you're limited to, you know, they're not going to buy a $10,000 product from someone they don't know, or, although I've sold some expensive products for clients. So this, this was ideal for me because the products were, you know, the content was all written by me. I had the list. I have an, a, an empl one employee who works in my other businesses, so I assigned her to this. And again, my work is an hour or two per week for not a huge income, but for a six-figure annual income. Got it. And now everybody should understand, and, and Bob, I think you understand this, although I use the term here, old info product marketing model, that doesn't mean it's a bad model. It just means I'm not using this as much anymore there are still some occasional orders which come with which come in um, with no work on my part whatsoever but I've now kind of morphed into this other model but I think that's a pretty good description and I think a lot of it and we talked about this on the previous session which is that a lot of the decision on whether or not to use this model the old quote unquote not bad but old for me info marketing model is a matter of personality type and and kind of basic kind of what you want to do and how you want to do things. So let me move to the second one and explain kind of the difference. So info marketing model 3.0 for me, I, I it's very simple. Um, there are no individual low priced info products, uh, but instead I my business now consists of two parts. There's a group coaching part which is, includes a, fri a private Facebook group, Zoom calls every week, and a multi-week online training program, and individual coaching via what I call JV partnerships. Now, the JV partnership are where I create an alliance with another party who's a subject matter expert, and we agree to collaborate and put things together 
more in terms of a partnership than a, a, a mentor mentee relationship or a coach to a, a person who's being coached. It's more of a partnership because we take all of the revenue, we subtract the expenses and we split it 50, 50. Now these are both things. Now this one takes a lot more time, but this here, the group coaching is very, very easy to do because it involves you talking to, to many people at once and using a Facebook group uh, for questions that get asked and group calls every week, Zoom, and then a multi-week online training. Now, Bob, why don't you serve as the questioner and ask me questions about the yeah, models? Yeah, I do have some. So Please. first of all, with C, uh, how do you deliver the online training? Is it recorded? Is it, again, Skype, Zoom? Is, and is it a class that you do off the cuff, or does it have a curriculum? All of those are good questions. Let me answer them. Now, uh, as I spoke to a couple of people who called me about our session uh, day before yesterday, the first time you do your, uh, your online training, you're doing it live for a core group of people, your beta group, if you will. Now, before you do that online training, you want to, de to develop the modules. And in my case, I try to make it simple, which is I always have eight modules. And almost always, module one has to do with mindset. And module eight is a wrap it all up and put it, you know, put a bow on it. So you've got modules two through seven that cover the content on whatever the topic is. And this is easily done with anyone's field. Uh, I, a gentleman that I spoke to, Garrett from South Africa yesterday, uh, he is doing it with some of his productivity material that he's developed and we'll be putting that together. Now, I am trying to enlist people in my first kind of foray back into this. I, I do, I've been doing this all the time, Bob, for other people. So now is the right. first time I'm doing it kind of again for myself after probably a eight to 10 year kind of layoff, if you will. And so in answer to your question, this portion of the training is going to be done live for the first group. But once it's done live, it's recorded, and every subsequent person that comes in then gets the recording of those modules. Does that make sense? It does. The, the one question I have is, what if uh, in, in the outline you, you discover through the questions, that, and maybe this doesn't happen to you, that you left out some topic out of the eight modules that, gee, everybody's asking you about and they want to know and you didn't think of. Do you add another week? Do you add another module? Or do you set up a, a group call on a special group call or, or private Facebook uh, chat or whatever to cover that topic? Again, good question. And it happens frequently. So here's what I do. So let's say you've already developed all the eight modules. And now all of a sudden you get a lot of questions. You usually create either a bonus or an addendum module that goes where it would make sense. So that let's, totally makes sense. Yeah. So let's say, for example, that I'm talking about um, one of the topics that I would cover in this is how to best create video products that you sell online. And let's say some new technology kicks in tomorrow that changes some of the complexities of that. I would then create a bonus module or redo the original model in order to reflect those changes. So it is a system that allows for some changes, but for the most part, once it's put in place, almost always any kind of additional material is done through bonus modules placed underneath the module in which that topic would make sense. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, speaking of bonuses, in the original methodology that you taught and practiced for many years and that I still use, and by the way, guys, many big internet marketers use that previous model. The Motley Fool uses it, for yeah. example. They yeah. got a, one point, a list of 1.2 million people. But you know, the, the, the question is to get people to sign up for the lower price group offers, a newsletter, you know, a, a, you know, a, a webinar. You know, you, we always offered bonuses. And you know, so if you sign up now, you, you get this uh, 80 page manual and these free, two free bonus reports. But with this, because it's higher priced, you don't offer bonuses to get people in, do you? Uh, I do not. What, what you do is incentivize them. And let me, again, 
everything that I talk about to you, Bob, and to anyone who's on the webinar is 100% completely transparent. So I'll actually tell you exactly what I did yesterday with a couple of people and how this works. So the, the bonus, if you will, or the incentive is the program normally would cost, and I state the price normally as $9,800. However, if for those who act quickly, we have an incentive-based pricing system in which rather than paying $9,800 for this eight weeks online training, plus Bob, a year of ongoing Zoom calls and Facebook group, these other components, the, the incentive-based pricing is $49.97. So now what happens is that that's really the bonus that they're getting. They're getting the bonus in terms of a break on price. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, marketers argue that at the higher prices, should you use a flat price or, or a supermarket price? You know, why not just call it five thousand uh, because it's so. But I I always agree with you, and uh, and I guess you've tested it that always use supermarket pricing, forty nine yeah. seventy seven. I guess when I talk to people about it, like when I talk to people on the phone, I say, you know, you're basically, it's basically five grand, but the pricing is forty nine ninety seven, And I don't know if it really makes a super big difference at that kind of a price point, but that's what I always do. So yeah, supermarket pricing stays in place. Other questions you have, Bob? Uh, now this, uh, maybe I shouldn't ask because the people here on the call other than me know how it works, but how do you create, or maybe you're going to get into this, a private Facebook Facebook group and do you schedule meetings or just people go on and leave posts? It's like a bulletin board. I don't have any idea how that works. Okay, so a private Facebook group is super easy to create if you have a Facebook account. You then have the choice to make it either an open, uh, a secret group or a non, a public group where people can see it. So there are various different types of ways that you can face, use Facebook to create groups. The purpose of those groups is if we're having weekly calls here, the part B, right? Bob, in this part, we have weekly right. calls, but I don't want people to be frustrated in between those calls with problems and issues that they have. Thus, the need for the private Facebook group, which allows people to go in, ask questions, and either myself, or oftentimes better yet, other members of the group will get those questions answered for them post haste. So they don't, they don't have to wait for the next week to get the answer and they don't have to be stuck waiting on that answer for the next group call. How do you know when you've got someone has left a question? Do you have to check it 10 times a day? Do you get a notification? Well, there's something within a Facebook group called tagging, which allows you as you start writing the name of the person you're trying to, to alert, it's called tagging them. As you write it, my name or somebody else's name will come up and that sends me a notification on Facebook that, hey, somebody has got a question in this group or somebody has made a comment where they've tagged you. Basically, it's like a, hey, Fred, somebody said something about you or has a question of you. Go check the group. I got it. Now, this might be, and then I'll, I'll let you continue on, a stupid question. But you say it's, um, the, you know, it's a multi-week training and after the first one, it's recorded. So therefore, can I take it according to my schedule or do you broadcast it once a week for six weeks or eight weeks? Good question. Again, um, what I what I have been doing and what I what I suggest people do is to use a system that allows you to drip out the content. Now, I'll give you an example of how to do this correctly and how to do it incorrectly, in my humble opinion, because I just I had an example in addition to offering classes and courses and coaching like this. I also am a consumer of such. So I have a coach myself, and I've also participated in programs that have a similar model to this. So listen to what happened, Bob. You'll find this kind of funny. So I signed up for a program, uh, again, about the same price point, about five grand, mm -hmm. and they had a multi-module structure. But what they did was you had to go through and, and answer and complete certain homework assignments in module one before they allowed you to get access to module two. Now, theoretically, I like the idea because basically it's saying, look, I think you should do a few of these things before I give you access to the next thing because if not, you're doing all, all the stuff out of order. Now, here's what happened though that got me really pissed off, which is they, they have monitors that this guy set up in the group that are, that are overly persnickety I mean, literally, I had, to I had to present the homework to them like three times, 
And finally, <laughs> you'll love this. Finally, by module three, I was so frustrated that I sent the, the head of the group uh, an email saying, look, what is going on here? These people are making me jump through ridiculous hoops. So basically his response was, screw you, you're out of here. He kicks me out of the group, refunds my money. Refunds it in full? Yeah, refunds it in full. Basically, now, now that program had a guarantee attached to it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but I, and I don't really know, I, I think basically he saw me as a potential troublemaker. And I wasn't really trying to be a troublemaker. I just thought his process was screwed up. And therefore, I objected to the way. Now, here's what I would have done. I'm going to, Bob, if you have this eight week program you're going through with me, you have to present me homework after week one. And I will give you feedback on the homework. And if you come back to me with the second iteration, I'll say, yeah, that's pretty good. You're on the right track. I'm going to open up module two to you. I'm mm -hmm. not going to give you such a hard time that you can't progress. And that's what I felt was happening to me. And so as a result of shaking my fist and saying, wait a second, this is BS, I got kicked out of the group. But you know what? I'm not surprised. I don't generally work well with others in certain circumstances. Fran Lebowitz, the writer, had a great line. She said, uh, I don't work well with others, nor do I wish to learn how to do so. <laughs> I mean, I generally, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good, but I tried to be like communicative. I actually said, look, mm -hmm. I think this is really kind of ridiculous, but this person had a different opinion. It's his group. He can run it his way. He wants to kick me out. That's fine. So, but there is this system. Any other questions before I move on? And again, we've got time. No, enough. I'm good. Okay, good. Okay. So next here, um, how do you get people into, uh, or what, what I'm trying to do in order to get people to bite on this. And by the way, I never try to sell this kind of individually. The individual coaching, I don't try to go out and look for JV partners. They emerge as a result of being in a group coaching program. So what I try and do, the paid Facebook marketing, the, uh, the only advertising I do is on Facebook. I do paid advertising there, or I have someone like you who's generous enough to say, hey, I've got a group of people who might be possible, you know, they'd like the information, Plus, they might be possible prospects because, you know, just there's, there's no big secret here, folks. At the end of this, you're going to get a free gift. And that free gift is going to entail my giving you some actual, you know, good, honest consulting advice. And with no, I'm not going to try and pitch you anything. But if you want to learn more about the program, I'll be happy to tell you. But so this is a non, and let me just skip here. This is an organic method that we're using right here, which is Bob has allowed me to make contact with his list, I'm now in a position to say to you, look, we can get on the phone, I'm gonna give you as much as advice as I can about your issues, and at the end of that time, if you're interested in hearing more about my program, I'll be happy to tell you how it works. But there's also the paid way, which is to put up an ad on Facebook, sometimes straight copy, which by the way still works, Bob, or a video ad on Facebook to drive people to the same place which mm -hmm. is to book an appointment. And so all of these things are all of the marketing methodologies, whether they be organic or paid, is an attempt to get people on the phone to see if you have a good match. Now, you'll find this interesting, Bob. And everybody on, and by the way, we're going to open it up for questions here in a bit too. The 15-minute match, this is something where if I, let's say you and I are friends on Facebook, Bob, mm -hmm. and, and you haven't gone to one of these webinars, but I look at your profile and I say, you know, Bob would be perfect for this program. And I send you a private message on Facebook and I say, hey, Bob, it really looks like I might have something here that you might be interested in. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have 15 minutes to get on the phone to see if we have a match? No, you know, no pressure just to see if we're a good match. I'm then trying to get you to do a 15 minute call. And literally, I keep it very short, probably less than 50 minutes to see if they want to do a longer 30 minute call. If it's if it works. So in other words, if I feel there's a good match, I say, well, then, you know, it seems like we're a good match, Bob. Why don't you go to my calendar and I'll show people how to get to that as well. Why don't you go to my calendar and book some time and let's see if this really is a good match. I know now we should at least proceed to the 30 minute call stage. So does that make but sense? But in that scenario, the, the potential trainee, Bob, is deciding whether it's a good match. But what if you in the 15 minutes don't like Bob? What if, what if you decide it's not a good match? Well, How do you I, tell them or do you tell them? 
Well, yeah, no, I'll say, you know what? It's it. I, I, I understand you might feel it's a good match, but I, and I could either make something up to be a little bit diplomatic or I could be very direct and just say, you know, I just don't think we're a good match given your skill set and my skill set. Or I could say, to make it more diplomatic, Bob, I already have someone that's in your industry and I think it might mm -hmm. be a potential conflict of interest, so I'll have to say no. Got it. So you get out of it gracefully. Yeah, gracefully. And again, um, you, you know, some people, there, there have been people where I can't remember. I remember a guy one time at a seminar in Canada where um, he came up to me and there were a group of people around watching this whole scene take place. And he said, I'll pay you triple your fee to be in that program. And I said, you couldn't pay me. You paid me a hundred times the fee. I wouldn't let you in this program because. So you're not, you're not always gracious. No, no. And that, because this yeah. guy was a jackass. I mean, yeah. I, he was clearly an idiot. And so I just said, mm -hmm. No, and I said no very publicly, but it was that's not my general methodology. I know, I know, <laughs> but I will on occasion if provoked. Mm -hmm. um, so here is the graph of my most, you know, the client that I've been working with the longest time. And again, these numbers are approximate numbers. I've kind of, I've kind of fudged a little bit because, frankly, I didn't want to go back and look at all these numbers. But he came to one of my events, Bob. Um, he came to an event of mine that I had in 2010, December. Uh, it was one of my full week boot camps where you, you know, you live at my house for a week. Uh, and by the way, that's now the, the program has now been replaced by the, the group coaching. So he came and we got along really, really well. And at the end of that time, I said, Hey, Bill, why don't we, why don't we just do something together here and uh, work? And so this became the, well, not the first, but the first really successful JV partnership. We agreed to that. So this, these were the revenue figures. So started out 2011, the first year, we netted about 17,000, all the way up to 2019. It looks like, like we're going to be close to somewhere between 350, $400,000. Um, and, you know, all, that, all of a sudden that becomes real money. Um, and I have then said to myself, I will probably restrict the number of JV partners that I have to certainly no more than 10, possibly less than 10. But those people come about as a result of first participating in the group coaching program now. In the old days, it was they first participated in a, a live event, a boot camp, whatever, because I want to get to know the people before I want to get into basically what's a, a business marriage with them. Does that is that making sense to you, Bob? It does. Just a quick question. Sure. Is this strictly for people who sell uh, either advice or information products? What about if someone sells merchandise? Well, I just spoke to someone earlier today who uh, had a, uh, he was selling physical products. So the answer is, and I, I know everybody hates this answer, it depends. Um, it depends on whether or not I feel that my knowledge will help that person mm -hmm. to make a substantial gain in their results. Uh, if it happens to be offline, I think I can. Like say, for example, the fact that, you know, I almost play golf for a living. If somebody had a golf site and I, you know, they didn't have any info products they were selling, I'd probably take that because I know right. it and I like it. So the answer is yes and no, depending on what, what it is they have and do. Ready, should I move on? Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. So here's the Bill okay. Louis program. What I am, what I'm helping Bill to market is his program, which looks suspiciously like what we talked about earlier, which is it's a Ford 4997 program, but you can make three payments monthly, three monthly payments, 1750, you end up paying about $250 additional to do that. There's also a six and 12 month option or, and this might be interesting to you, all the given all the copywriting you do, Bob, for various people. So mm -hmm. the forty nine ninety seven. If someone and I, again, we get people who are retiring executives who love doing work with their voice, and for them, it's like, yeah, here, pop it on my credit card, pay the whole thing up front, I'm done. There are people that where money is not not an object, and the 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 one time payment is easy. In fact, I had a guy on the phone the other day. The call took 12 minutes, and by the 10th minute, he just said, look, I'm good with all this. How much do you need from me? I've got a credit card. So he gives me his credit card for basically five grand. Now, a lot of people, though, who come to us aren't in a position 
to give us that money up front. So I came up with this idea, which I think is is fairly clever, and it's back. Remember the old rent to own model, Bob? Yep. So what I allow people to do is basically they can get access to every part of this program that we offer for two hundred ninety seven dollars a month. They get access to everything. They can continue to pay that until their five thousand dollars is paid off, or at say at month five after making fifteen hundred dollars about in payments they say to us hey what's my balance can i pay it off sure no problem so it's 297 dollars a month every dollar of which goes towards the purchase of the program now certain portions of this program renew annually only two parts which is the facebook group and the weekly webinars those two things renew at 997 per year so there is a little bit of a back end but most of the payment is up front and it's a one-time payment for Fortnite. Now, you'll be interested to know also that the reason why I did this is I would much rather have people pay one time than make payments because if you make payments, you can always stop making payments. So we encourage people with, you know, to go with one payment, but if they can't, we'll certainly go with this one. Any questions on the payments, Bob? Uh, so what happens if I was doing the monthly and after five months I said, you know, I don't I don't want to continue. Do I have to pay off the balance of the purchase or can I just stop and that's it? Yeah, one of the things we say is, look, um, if you find after five months it's not for you, you've had access, you've tried it, you do not have to, you do not owe us the balance, you're free to go, but we don't refund you any money. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, now so what do they get in exchange for the above here? So any of these options, they get access to 70 plus hours of online, you know, you thought that eight modules was a lot. We basically have created, and, and Bill calls it, you know, a voiceover university in kind of online because it really does cover virtually every aspect. And whenever I talk to people, I say 85% of this program is concentrated on how you get work. Whereas most people who do coaching in this area try to coach you on your performance. Whereas we're coaching you not on that, we're coaching you on how to get the work because that in, is in fact more important than the performance. So, and then we do, so we have 70 hours of online training. We've got 18 webinars each month on a variety of topics and they get access to the closed Facebook group. Now, inside that closed Facebook group, they can watch Bill work. And by the way, I'm gonna put you to the test here. I wonder if anybody else in, in, in the group uh, online here on the webinar can answer this as well. But think about this, folks. Bill is, is the only person in the voiceover coaching field the, uh, that does coaching for voiceover talent that allows you to watch him live in his studio. So whenever I get on the phone with somebody to sell them on this program, um, I always say to them, well, and just to let you know, I, uh, we have a monopoly on a certain aspect of voiceover training. Bill is the only person in the voiceover coaching field that allows you to watch him every day of the week with a microphone and a camera on his, his studio. So, and, and we are the only ones that offer that. Now, if he has an NDA with a client where he can't show it, he doesn't, but for the most part, you can watch him live. So here's my, my challenge to you, Bob. Think of another profession or another area, a topic where we could sell info products in which something like this, where you could watch someone work, would be effective. Now, I know you said day before yesterday, if people could see your screen, but can you think of anything else other than, I mean, I don't, I can't easily come up with something other than voice work where this would work. Can you? Uh, to see the person work, um, I think to see a, uh, and, and as long as you could hear what they were saying, I see, to, I think it would work with any kind of management uh, or professional services consultant. Um, it would work for a uh, an interior designer, a graphic okay. designer. Yeah, I can think of a lot of people would work for. Yeah, and and for for some reason I had this mental set that that made me think, God, there's very few people. But I think you're right. And if you can agree, if 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 it's you yourself, or if you're working with someone where you're the you know the Fred in this Bill and Fred you know kind of adventure. Um, if you can get yourself or the party that, who's a subject matter expert to agree to let people watch them, 
it's kind of like a health club membership, Bob. People find this to be the most important part of this program, but on any given day, when I go in there and look at the stats, there's three people out of 200 that are watching Bill live. That's not surprising. Uh, yeah. All it, of so there's certain there, there are certain things you offer that have a great promotional value, and then once the person's doing the has bought the service or the training, they most of them don't take advantage of it. But that still doesn't that doesn't mean it's still not a great thing to offer. Uh, you remember my friend Gary Blake? He he did business writing seminars, and he said to corporate clients, "If you hire me to do you know train your people in business writing for thirty days." Everyone in the seminar can fax me their documents and I'll edit them. And that's what really closed the sale for him. And he said, almost no one did it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think it could be one of those items. But again, if, if anybody's on the webinar in which they have a service where they can do this, not only, but listen to this. So I, Bob, I know you're not real super into Facebook, but what this closed group allows you to do is whenever he goes live, and he mm -hmm. starts and then he stops it. Facebook archives that video. And literally now we have over 2000 hours of archived material in the Facebook group that people could go through if they so chose. And he also tags those things with a, with a tag. For example, if he's doing an audition, he tags it with an audition. So you could, if you wanted to, as one of our members, go in there, type in auditions, and it would bring up all the auditions that he's ever recorded live, and you could watch those. Or you put in um, marketing calls, and you could pull those up. So it, it has, it, it's, a, it's a really a great tool for selling people, but again, how much is it used? The answer is probably not that much. But again, that doesn't matter that it's not used. What matters is the person signing up for it perceives that I might use this, it has a high value, and really, tips them over to making the purchase, I think. You got it. And so uh, when I say here, everyone needs a coach, I don't care what you're doing. Um, even, you know, the top tennis players, golfers, whatever in the world, I have somebody who's coaching me. His current rates just went up. Luckily, I was grandfathered in at a lower rate. Uh, his current rates are $3,000 a month. So if, if anybody ends up getting involved in a program that I'm in, involved in, in, in leading, a, gooch, a, a group coaching program, Believe me, um, I'm, I'm not just a practitioner of this. I actually put my money where my mouth is and I pay someone to coach me as well because there's always someone who knows something more than you do or is super more knowledgeable about certain areas. And to me, it's always a question of if I give you X, will you, re will, will you return, return me multiples of X in a, in, a ver in, a, in a reasonably short period of time? So that's my computation. And I think you'd probably agree with that, right? Yeah. Uh, again, Jay Abraham famously said when he was explaining his very high fees, he said, "Well, it's simple. If I can, if I can give you, if I give you ten dollars, will you give me a quarter?" Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now, what I want to do is I op I want to open it up for questions here. So I see a few. Uh, one person told me that this uh, was not useful for them. Well, then I apologize for taking your time. So that, uh, I'm glad we found that out uh, relatively early. Um, Jim says, okay, Jim, hold on here. Um, Jim says, loves the perspective on, on products, blah, blah, blah. Okay, on the rent to own, how do you keep them from downloading or screen recording everything and then screwing you out of the payments? Um, the thing is, it's a good question. So let's take a look back at this. Um, they, they certainly can do screen recordings of the 70 hours of online video training. Uh, it's a lot of material. And if they're willing to sit down and do that, I guess we just have to take that as a loss. Um, because, you know, if they want to do that, go ahead. Uh, we're not going to police that. Now, all the material is streaming online, though, so you can't download it. So that's part of that. Um, so let's see. Screen, it's great. So the answer is we can't. Um, then Jim's next question is, can you drip feed content per person on Facebook? Uh, I have a huge archive. You cannot, not that I know of, uh, on Facebook. We don't. I, I don't know that that exists. Uh, fitness trainers. Gary's mentioning as somebody who could do the live. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, might not a client. Andy saying uh, a, a Bill was doing voiceover acting to be nervous about confidentiality. Yeah, 
Uh, good question, Andy. No one has ever objected to him recording the sessions uh, unless they say, hey, it's an NDA. So not a problem. Um, so Jim says, somebody comes in new to the F uh, Facebook group, gets viewing assets to everything. Uh, I've been paying six months for the same content. What keeps me from being pissed off? You know what? There is so much material in that Facebook group. And really, the benefit of this Facebook group, I think, uh, has to do with almost kind of the camaraderie that comes about from everybody who's participating in the group. Um, but you know what? People will get annoyed at virtually anything. So will people get annoyed uh, that they that somebody else who's been in there longer has you know access? Uh, these might be issues, Jim, but I've never I've never really heard that one brought up. Um, so the answer is in my in my in my case, no. Uh, you're welcome. Excellent answers. So what else have you got, Bob? I'm waiting. If you have anybody has any questions, now the time. Put it in, in the uh, question box, and we'll do that. But before you go, let me just give you your free gift here. So now what? Free gift. Uh, this is what it's going to be. And again, we'll stay longer if you want for questions after we're done. But I want to give you your free gift right now. Your free gift is a four a four hundred and fifty dollar value. There's a 30 minute phone consultation with me. Uh, if you book that, I will not repeat. I will not try and twist your arm to buy anything. I will, at the end of our, our call, give you the opportunity to enroll to be part of the new beta test I'm doing, which is my coaching group here that's getting started. So if you go back to what we started talking about with this coaching group, this is starting from scratch and everything will be live. So that's what you're getting. Uh, if you enroll. But again, I don't care if you do. If you're not a good match, I'll tell you so. If you don't think you're a good match, then you'll say, forget it. I don't want to do it. Uh, how do you do that? Now, I used a uh, URL here for you to do that. So if anybody goes to, and I'll, I'm going to type it in the chat window as well. So if you go to, Bob, so I had this set up. Um, so it's, let me just see if it'll work without the HTTP. Fred and Bob Bly.com. And if somebody can, Somebody click on that link. I think it'll work. Um, so it should go to a Calendly calendar, which allows you to book time with me for 30 minutes. So that's how people get and receive their their gift worth $450, 30-minute consultation by going to fredandbobly.com. And I'm waiting for other questions. And let's see here. Cindy says, how do you follow up with the ones who sign up? Uh, when do you determine you need to add to your team so you don't miss people? Okay, Cindy, um, I'm not really sure. I'm so you're. I'm guessing that you're referring to the fact that in a group it might get so large that you can't handle it yourself. Is that what you're saying? You know what? I don't think Gary. It does need the www. If you click on that link, uh, Gary, tell me if it works because I think it will. If it it doesn't, okay. So whatever goes on there. So Cindy, in answer to your question. Um, how do you follow up the ones who sign up? Well, once they sign up, if they're in my program, let's go back to here. Okay, so let's say they join my program. I put them immediately, they, they friend me on Facebook, I put them in the Facebook group, so that's first. Um, I then sign them up for the, the Zoom call every week. They then get access via whatever you know learning system I'm using, be it Kajabi or Teachable or any of those you can use. Uh, I put them in the eight, eight, uh, 68 week online training program. In my case, it's going to be eight weeks. So if that doesn't make sense, please follow up. Uh, so Garrett from South Africa saying, ever tried Mighty Networks instead of Facebook for the groups? You know what? Uh, Facebook is just so easy to do. I haven't even tested anything else. Um, so the answer is no on that, but I'm not saying it's 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 better or worse. Just have it. How much of the beta program deals with building the audience um, marketing to build your herd? Obviously, uh, it's a combination of both, Wes. Um, it has to do with you. Obviously, if you have a template for a system, you need to figure out how to get people in there. So, yes, uh, marketing and getting the people in is a large component. Uh, got a bad gateway, huh? Gary says, OK, so maybe it is www. OK, so so folks in this one, let me put it in again here. And if, Bob, if you have you got any questions, let me know here. Let me try sure. this. Fred and Bob Bly Duck. Um, see if this one works, folks. Give that a shot. <clears throat> Bob, any questions from you? Yeah. Um, what if, uh, and this happens to people sometimes, 
they sign up for an ongoing training program like this, and then suddenly something interferes. They have to go to Italy for two weeks to take care of their sick grandmother. Uh, does, can, does that interfere? Are these things very strictly scheduled? Or well, does it think, allow some flexibility? Yeah, well, they um, let's just say, for example, they were in, an init in the initial beta test group. So if they had to leave in, and not be there for week three and four, we recorded those. So when they get back, they can uh -huh. then go week three and four and then catch up at week five. Mm -hmm. And also, right. the calls allow people at any and every level to come in and ask questions. So you'll have people who are through the program for two months uh, on the same call with someone who is at module one. And those people are all asking questions and it, it helps to reinforce it to the, for the people who've been through it. But it's just a whole, I'd like to make sure that everybody gets their questions answered. So that's how it's done. And if you don't, wouldn't mind explaining again, maybe I'm the only one that has this question. So what are the parts that you have to renew every year? Oh yeah, okay, so the renewal parts. Now again, in Bill's program, I haven't really decided on this for my own, but in Bill's program, let me just say here. So we're on the part that renews every year is, and this is, I haven't, I should add this for what, what Bill does, private Facebook groups slash um, weekly webinars. So the private Facebook group and the weekly webinars renews annually at 997 in his Got group. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's, there are people, people who hate Facebook, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not a big fan of all the stuff they're doing e either, but uh, it happens to be the easiest platform to use. So that's just what we use. Um, let's see. Okay, Judy says, how do you develop the online training curriculum? Uh, how do you know what your online training will be about? Uh, how long does it take to get this up and running and earning revenue? Okay, all good questions. Let me take those one at a time. How do you develop the online training curriculum? Well, the same way that I always used to remember, Bob, when I told you about my system for writing a book, which was right. I would just I would just kind of literally vomit out every single idea about your topic you can come up with, put each one of those ideas on an index card. So let's say after doing that, you have 250 index cards now sitting on your living room floor. Then what you do is you go through the index cards and you put them in piles that are related to the same topic. So now you have. Uh, let's make it really easy, uh, 12 piles of 20 index cards each. You now have what could be a 12-week program. So if you want to make it eight weeks, you're going to combine part one and two and make it so it's eight total. So you have eight stacks of index cards, and each one of those is, is a module in your online training course. Now, in my case, I always just do the same thing, which is module number one is always mindset. Module number eight is always wrapping things up and putting a bow on it. Then the modules number two, three, four, five, six, and seven are all specific to my topic. So if we're covering information marketing, somebody asked earlier about how much we're gonna, we're gonna devote to marketing, and obviously then this up here, where did I put that, where I said, yeah, the paid and the organic, uh, how you get those is going to be one full session that we do. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Now, Judy's next question was, how do you know uh, what your online training will be about? Well, your online training is obviously about the topic that you're knowledgeable on. So if you're a subject matter expert, whatever your topic is, that's what we're creating the training about. Uh, how long does it take to get this up and running and earning revenue? Well, in my case, um, if, if we have three people sign up by the end of these three webinars, uh, I have basically have $15,000 now. If I give them payments, which I intend to allow for, Bob, this is interesting. Here's what I'll do. And again, where there's no smoke and mirrors here, you're getting the, the complete answers to all of your questions. So let me just tell you, in my case here, let me go back to up here, um, my online model. So this will be, um, this will end up being $49.97 one pay or three times two grand. Now, what do you think I'm doing there? I'm incentivizing the heck out of you to give the money up front. Yeah. And those, those will be the only options. I think that's good. Uh, those are good price points. There you go. Um, Joe says, got the website uh, to come up. 
but it says there are no times available in October. Uh, you know what? Um, this is set up in such a way that I have a number of uh, a number of calls that are being booked there. So if you can't get an appointment that way, you can email me directly at my email address I'm putting in the, the chat box and make sure you put in the subject line, just put Bob Bly webinar so I know who you are. I'm putting that in there as well. Okay, so no other questions from the group. Bill, uh, Bob, do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, if I'm gonna do this and I hate the, the jargony word monetize, but if I'm gonna use your system to monetize my, my specialized knowledge uh, or information, in Bill's case, it's how to do voiceovers. How good do I have to be? Do I have to be like, Bill's really good, I've used him. Do I have to be like the best or one of the 10 best voiceover guys in the, in the world? Or is it more important that I'm a good teacher? What, what would make this uh, me a good candidate to use this system and, and as a training tool and profit center? And I think that you actually know that answer, but you're, you're prompting me from the fact that you know what my answer is to this, which is the following, that as long as you're in the top, as long as you feel you're in the top 10% of whatever you do, it's, it's, it's perfectly legitimate for you to then train others because theoretically then if you're accurate in your assessment of yourself, there are 90% of the people in your field that don't know as much as you do. Now, many of those people will think they know more than you, but they don't. But let's say you, you're self-assessing things correctly. As long as you know more than most of the people, and in this case, I'm saying if you're in the top 10%, then I think you have the legitimate right mm -hmm. to set up something like this yourself because even the, the people that know more than you aren't going to buy your program anyway because they're going to go, what can this guy teach me? But those who know, la know less, they will be able to find value. Does that make sense? Uh, totally. And I was prompting you because we, you you taught me that 90-10 formula a while ago, but I, I wanted you to bring it up because I think it's it an answers a big fear people have. They always say to me when they ask me about information marketing that I learned from you, they said, well, you know, I'd like to do information on uh, – on you know divorce mediation you know i'm a lawyer but i'm not i'm not a i'm not you know the, you know i'm not alan dershowitz and, yep. and they said fred says you don't have to be alan dershowitz you just have to be in the top 10 percent or so yeah and it's i think that you know literally, literally i mean i think though that you're right that it does help to have the ability to teach so if you both are in the top 10 percent and you're a pretty good teacher you should do it um if if you feel uncertain about it uh, it's going to come out when you talk to people, so then don't do it. But for most people who are on this call, I think a lot of people are on the webinar, I think a lot of people that are in your group probably qualify pretty well to do this kind of work. Or you wouldn't be here in the first place. You got it, precisely. Good. So uh, we're right at the end of our time. A lot of good questions, both from you and from the group. Bob, many thanks for your help. And My thank pleasure, you. always. Thank you for everyone for being on the webinar. And again, if you want to get in touch with me, if you can't get it through this site, if for some reason that's not working, just send me an email, thefredbleak at gmail.com, and we'll set something up. Bob, we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Fred. Thank you.